Hello my lovelies and welcome back to one of the greatest games ever made, Disco Elysium. We're, we're going back and we're going to finish most of those games that we abandoned when Shiny New Elden Ring came along. This is definitely going to be one of them because it's beautiful. It is, I, I say it every time we come to play it, but this is... This is one of the most beautiful narratives you're going to find in video games, and also one of the most interestingly told narratives, too. It's like a really good science fiction alternative history novel, but it's actually so much more than that because of its medium, because of how interactive it is and how various it is. It's never going to be quite the same twice. Now then, oh, we've got a, uh, a little thoughty thought there. Stop messing with the coin view and hold on to something. The wind is strong. That's interesting. Oh, and another one. Hang on. What are we thinking about now? Oh. Something. It's a long way down to your death from here. 20 meters at least. That's right. We found that the last time we played, we found a corpse. That corpse there by the bench. And we're trying to figure out... What happened to him? Now, I don't think there's anything we can do just yet. Oh, hello. Moonshine probably smells like tasty fermentation. You would say that, Harry. You've got a real thing about fermented products, don't you? Oh, we're looking quite fly at the moment. We very much are not. Let's see. So this is the marketplace, right? I love this. Look at the rain. It's beautiful. I think we've already looted this place, but I'm just going to double check. I don't think there's anything else we need to do. We found the corpse, and that was uh, key, I do believe. Oh, yeah, I'll take it. Filthy jacket! Lovely! I'm sure that's fabulous. Let's have a look. Do I have a, um, a skill point? No, I don't think I do, do I? Um, hmm. No, not at the minute. Okay, can't do anything. The Lonesome Long Way. Yes, that's the last, the, the latest quest that we got. So here's our tasks. Uh, find smokes and smoke them. Yes, we should really get on with that. Dead body on the boardwalk. Question about the dead man. Uh, told you she can't talk about him now, but you need specifics. Height, build, etc. to confirm your autopsy. Ask a little later when she has collected herself. Okie dex. Get the whole story on Titus. Yes. Take the stuffed bird to Gart. I'm not sure that's going to go down too well. Uh, tech, trick, oh, yes, we've got to check those traps, don't we? Um, call the station about the dead body. Oh, 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 so we need to go back to um, Kit's car. So we can call the station. Under a yellow plastic dome. You could use it to call someone, unless you're out of change. Pick up the handset. You hear the tone. The machine is inoperable. Oh. Put ten cents in and dial a random number. All right. Calling. Why not, Harry? Why not? Still calling. Yeah. This feels wrong. Should you be doing this? I don't know, but Kit seems to be interested. End of tone. Someone picks up. Yeah. Is that you, Pierre? The voice is female and sounds about a hundred years old. No, this is not Pierre. Do you have any news about Pierre? Who is Pierre? He's my sister's grandson. He used to visit me as a lad. Fine young man. Okay. But who are you then? A salesman of some sort? Modern a handbag? Not the force of any house. It's a shame what you did to our country. <laughs> Alright, okay. Oh dear. The woman moans and the phone lines howl in unison with her. I'm not a salesman, I was just calling a random number and you somehow- Yes, I'm a salesman. What exactly did we do to your country? No, I'm a police officer. Oh dear. Well, I'm gonna call her Lady Bracknell. Because that's the what she sounds like. Drowned. 
in white noise. Sounds like waves washing a beach, growing in volume until the call suddenly disconnects. You know, I wouldn't take this literally. That voice is almost certainly not real. It's almost certainly Harry being Harry. You get a sinking feeling. It makes you look if Lieutenant Kitsuragi overheard you. To your relief, he did not. That's probably a good thing, isn't it? We could do it again. Calling. Still calling. Again? Seriously? Yes, authority, seriously. Someone with a masculine voice picks up. Oh, so not Lady Bracknell then. Hello, Gerard speaking. Uh, what a douche name. Change it. Change your name. <laughs> I'm going to say that. A woman's voice shouts something in the background, and when Gerard speaks again, his voice is hushed. Thanks for calling, asshole. You're welcome, Gerard. Phone hanging up. Disconnect tone. One more time. Calling. I'm sorry, I can't resist. Calling. Calling. Still calling. Oh, come on, someone answer. Still calling. Stop calling me, man. <laughs> Someone picks up. The voice on the other end is slightly hysterical. The voice on the other end is slightly hysterical. I'll get you your money, alright? I just need till tonight. Let me work. Ah, I want this delivered to the whirling in rags in Marta days. Jettis. I, um... The young man realises something. Hey! You're not Tethys. No. Screw you! And don't ever call here again. You're fucking with some serious people. Oh, I'm sure. Disconnect tone. Ahem. <clears throat> <laughs> a single ahem <clears throat> lets you know the lieutenant is now ready to move on. <laughs> oh, your politeness, Kim. I love it. He's a very, very polite man, is Kim. He'd have to be to put up with Harry, wouldn't he? A dead phone and a smashed receiver. Like, someone hung up too hard. So there's a, there's something going on here, isn't there? There's some sort of illegal activity happening with regards to that phone. You should come back here when it snows. A strange feeling. It passes quickly. Really? Why? One wonders. Doesn't matter where you go in this game, there's something interesting going on. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. The rear tire of a motor carriage adorns these reeds. Doesn't it? It's beautiful here, actually. And I love the rain. I love the rain. Oh, hello. It's a church by the looks of it. You feel the shadow of a very large building fall on you, and it's very ominous as well. The sign reads St. Brune, 1147. Ooh. That symbol above the door is creepy. Dusty pews in the shadows. Many seem to be missing. It's quite beautiful, actually. All wood as well. An altar shrouded in dark or something like that. It's too dark to tell. Should we go in, Kim? I think we should go in. I'm intrigued. I don't think... Oh, hello. Doors, more than twice your height stand shut in front of you. Oh. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock carelessly drilled into the wood. Mm, rattle Nothing the doors. Happens, only the sound of the padlock rattling against the door. Well, damn. Sanctuary! I don't think that's going to work. The, what, me shouting sanctuary? Me doing my Quasimodo impression? No, it probably isn't. High above, the wind wraps the church in its rush, cold and wet from the ocean bay. It parts around the massive keel-shaped roof, like a test tunnel washing both sides, the way it has done for 340 years. Oh, wow. The wind keeps its distance. So should you. Oh, I love you, Shivers. I love your poetic turns. I really do. There is a hole in my heart. Okay. The lieutenant looks at the padlock. He didn't hear you asking. You were quiet enough. Mmm, it's like the carpentry. On the door is block like and angular, like the church itself. Two large beams shoot downwards, sinking into the wood before they reach the threshold. 
Run your hand over the beam. The surface is smooth from the wind, but moist to the touch. Mm. Take a closer this look. This cheap-looking padlock is sturdily built. It shackles together a hasp and a staple screwed into the wooden door. The lock is adorned with a yellow sticker. Okay. Look at the sticker. You see a yellow circle with two X's and a big curve below them that looks like a mouth. You're pretty sure you haven't seen it before, but what the symbol mm. depicts is clear enough. A smiling dead guy. The curve makes it smile, and the X's make it dead. <laughs> Have you seen the symbol before? He takes off his glasses and uses a blue handkerchief to thoroughly wipe them clean before inspecting the sticker. Then he looks up, pauses, and replies. Kim is the best video game character ever. I love Kim so much, and so does everyone. There are actually Kim Kitsuragi fan groups out there, and I can see why. No. Oh. <laughs> you see? He's great. What does it look like to you? It looks like a dead man smiling. Suggests junior delinquency. <laughs> uh, what is suggestive of junior delinquency here? I haven't seen that sticker before, and I'm not a youth. <laughs> Interfacing. Try to peel off the sticker without ripping it. All right. There's nothing like yeah. the sound of the sticker. Now it's stuck to your thumb. Shake it off your thumb and throw it in the wind. All right. Au revoir, sticker. <laughs> I have, you know, I can't remember ever laughing so much at a video game as at this one. It's brilliant. The padlock passes through a staple that's been hastily attached to the wood. Closer inspection reveals that one of the screws is mm. not a screw at all, but a nail. The work has been done recently and is unprofessional, to say the least. Ah. Should you want to get through, it might be easier to just pry the whole thing off. Turn to the lieutenant. This is where Mr. Prybar comes in handy. Maybe we should circle the building first and look for another way. The building has seen enough mistreatment. That's true, Kim. There is a touch of guilt in his voice. Where do you think we should start? In a start? Real base underneath the wind. A sure sign of general delinquency. Somewhere east of here. Ah, okay. That's probably not going to work, because we're not... Um, I will equip the tool, but... Oh, hello! Dumpty Dumpty Dump Center. Oh. Home, stupid cop. Not with the art crowd. You hate them. Everyone hates them. Even they hate themselves. It's nauseating. An industry built on sprezzatura and sparkling wine. And, let's be honest, tax evasion schemes. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center is the heart of this unholy symbiosis of aesthetics and tax optimization. And now that you've internalized it, you can have a piece too. Yay! What does that mean? Encyclopedia passive gives plus 10 XP and plus 2 real. That's grand. Uh, minus 2 suggestion! Pretentious wanker! Uh, <laughs> if YouTube would let me get away with it, I'd call the video that, but it won't, I'm afraid. So um, I will accept that. That is f fabulous. Oh, I am pleased. Oh my god, this this game is, is amazing. Alright, let's have a look and see if we can find another way in. Because Kim's feeling guilty. Hello, what's this? There's something over there. Oh my god. Is this one of the traps, maybe? That could be. Hello! What are you doing? Painted with pastels, someone is trying to bring cheer into the world. Damn, it's cold outside. It must have taken a lot of patience to do this. Okay, let's go talk to him. What is he doing? Drawing. Making compositions and things. Trash from some unending party. Yes, I can hear the music. A pole screwed into the ice keeps the tent erect. More tribalistic markings. This post is covered in little humanoids. What the hell is going on? 
The tent is just tarpaulin fabric covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three <clears> young <throat> men are listening to some new form of music. It's like nothing you've ever heard. <laughs> One of them looks at you. Oh dear. Come on, get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. <laughs> it's safe to assume this is their leader, or at least he thinks he is. Squeeze in. Sorry, oh. We barely have room for one. Oh. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. <laughs> I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. Yeah, I think that's more true. I'm sure you will feel right at home. <laughs> Thanks, Kim? I think. Oh, we're actually going in. All right. Why not? We're actually going in. Fabulous. A speaker. The big kind they use for live music. Well, yeah. Canisters filled with what appears to be water. The label says a distilled. Oh, wow. All right. see a youngish man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He All right. puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hey, Andre. How you doing? Hello. I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. I quite like him. I'm going to shake his hand. is strong, sweaty, and warm. He's trying to project and inspire confidence. Yeah, I, 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 I like his socks, actually. Look at his socks. Those are ace. This is my posse. Noid. The young man with earrings oh dear. looks at you suspiciously. Oh, Noid looks, um... Yeah. An egghead. Egg! <laughs> he yells. The tape player high above his head continues to blast strange music. Together with a little burger, who's out there right now doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers. <laughs> Wait, how many music venues have you organized? We have many in the pipeline, officer. Why are you here? You see, we've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. Artists are for talent. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock. We've had rotten luck with the real estate part. Ah, uh, that doesn't surprise me. This is a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise for my friend Noid's potty mouth. I realise this is not how you speak to a police officer. He has authority issues. <laughs> There's no need. The place is pretty Which bad. Which leads me to the problem of occupied ecclesiastical property. Oh. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of narcomania on the coast. Ah, uh, yes. I'm talking about the church, and I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dope heads and burnouts if left unattended. Ah, uh, I'll bet. <laughs> Are you all right, Egghead? Burnouts. <laughs> he angrily spits on a screw, then starts cleaning it. Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin A's on the map for one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that in Revershall. Oh yeah. Strike that. The road. <laughs> and sadly yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. Oh dear. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine just how bad those dope heads and burnouts really are. Good. This calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. <laughs> I won't stand for narcomaniacs of any kind. No narcomaniacs on my watch. Shake your head gravely. What kind? The spooky kind. Spookiness is not a matter. Okay, what exactly do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you would be the judge of that, officer. All I can say is, their spookiness is the kind that keeps us from restoring this church into a community centre and a place of spiritual refuge. Okie dokie. Also, they don't eat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. Ah, uh, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Wanna spin tapes without them spooking it up. Place has bad signs. No one can dance like that. <laughs> thank you, Egghead. Yeah, thanks, Egghead. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter. Getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing, I'm sure it's not what the Ecclesiastes meant their property for. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. All right, man. He claps his hands enthusiastically. Andre is obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. The boys exchange giddy looks. Uh, did you put the padlock on the yes. door? I asked Noid to install a measure against more drifters wandering in. It's a temporary fix, just something to contain the situation. Okay. I had to do it in an hour. Not my best work, but it should hold for a while. 
I need the key. Of course. Noid, give the officer the key. Yeah, Noid. All right. Uh, the speed freak dips into his belt pack and produces a yellow key. He then makes a sudden, cool, infused move, tossing it in your general direction. Um... <laughs> oh, go for it, why not? It's oh, as if time is frozen somehow. You think you can sense the key moving in the air? Yeah, this is going to be way... Cool. Oh dear, don't ruin the call by overdoing it. Raise your hand in front of your face with minimum effort. Blam! Straight in the eye. Straight <laughs> in the whole eye hole. <laughs> the looking hole. <laughs> Man, it's nothing. Pick the goddamn key up. Put it in your pocket and move on. My bad. <laughs> it's all right, Noid. Don't worry he about looks it. Looks like he's genuinely sorry. He didn't throw them better. <laughs> As always, we'll be right here, waiting patiently for the news. Yeah. Fair enough. Be careful in there, officer, and tell us how it goes. Yeah, we'll be here. Okie dokes, guys. Well, I'm going to talk to the others as well. So you had a talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Noid. Good. Skin shows through the holes in the Speed Freak's too large sweater. In front of him, an open toolbox full of carpentry tools and parts. It's good you talked to Andre first. Gave me time to get a reading on your sign. Can't really talk to people before you get a reading. He runs his hand through his hair, which is combed back in mock seriousness, and continues to fiddle with some gears. Um, I saw a sticker on- oh yeah, sign. Yeah, gotta compare. See if we can align. I- you wouldn't want to align with Harry. Noid, believe me. Interesting. I suck at social <coughs> man. Really? Even now our sign synchronization is way off. I'll see what I can do. He continues to rearrange the tools. I saw a sticker on the padlock. Can you tell me anything a about sticker? it? Sticker? You mean the yellow one? Can you describe it to me? Okay, it's a yellow circle, the human face, with X's for eyes and a smile underneath. I think the X's mean the guy is dead. Good. What did you want to know? Um. Was I right? Is it a dead guy yes, smiling? You're the 23rd person to get it right. <laughs> 23 people. Looks like it's a dead guy smiling to the entire human race. Why do you think that's so? We're all the same. Same eyes, same smiles, same death. Okay, what does it mean? In history. We are living in the age of history, and in the eyes of history, we are always already dead. How can we ever smile then? Because history is a lie. So are its depths. Okay, Noid. Present moment and life are the hardcore. The hardcore expels death. Whatever you say. Maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's just really ecstatic about the beats. <laughs> maybe, Noid. Maybe. Or drugged out of his mind. Come to think of it. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe the smiling dead guy is a symbol for communism. It's also dead but doesn't care. Um. Better not mention it. Yeah, thanks, Electrochemistry. You would come up with that, yeah? Or drunk. Or in a clinical coma. All glad to be dead. But those versions suck. <laughs> All right, Knight. Well, I guess one could write an entire treatise on the thing. But what for? What about now? Are the signs all right now? Nah. Hmm. Still strongly out of sync. Stage gamma disalignment. What? You heard me. He examines the small metal bolt in his hand. Alright, why are you called Noid? The hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It's not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. He picks up some sort of widget. It's not easy to reach a harmonic resonance of signs without some adjustment. Does this mean we need sign matching? Yes. Further sign matching would do good for us. One way to achieve this would be by getting us into the church. Okay, maybe I'll come back later. Thanks, Noid. Should we talk to Egghead? I suppose we should. A young man with peroxide blonde hair holds up a Harmon Walshy tape player, nodding along to the music. He looks at you with a knowing smile and says, as though you're supposed to be sharing some tremendous evangelical secrets. <laughs> hardcore! Is it? It's hardcore! You're just going to keep saying it's hardcore, aren't you? Skibbadee, skibbadanger. I am the rearranger. Okie dokie. Your cop training did not prepare you for this. What to do? <laughs> Could there have been a right way out of this garden of forking paths, you think? Mm. Good question. I'm sure Kim will be happy to see us again. 
Right, so now we have a way into the church. Kim was right. We didn't have to apply violence at all. A shaggy looking girl in her late teens or early twenties kneels on the ice with an electronic contraption in her hand. Hearing you approach, she looks up. Oh, hello there. She doesn't sound that enthusiastic to see us. She must be a cell, the last of the speed freaks, Posse. Oh, okay. It's cold out here. But she's not wearing a hat. <laughs> she must be freezing. All right, empathy. That's bizarrely specific, but Everyone fine. Everyone knows drugs make you invulnerable to cold. You bet this one likes to party. <laughs> Dear child, it's freezing. Where's your hat? <laughs> you must be a cell. That's my name. I take it you have met the others. Did they tell you about the? Ch I'll help you. All right. Great. Let us know if there's any progress, will ya? We've been waiting for weeks here. <laughs> it's, I'm gonna say that to huh? him. I said you should have a hat on. So should you. I've got. A, I've actually. I've got you a bandana. Don't have to do anything. <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> I should and I do point at your hat. Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> it's nice. You should wear one too if you plan on staying outside in this weather. Yeah. Well. Look, man. Fuck the hat. <laughs> Pulse rises. <laughs> what did she just say? That's not how a civilian is supposed to address an officer of the law. I doubt that is going to go through, so I'm not... Is that kind of language really necessary? I'm sorry I said fuck the hat. I was concentrating on something else. <laughs> My whole family swears and it rubbed off on me. There's a pained expression on her face. She'll answer your questions now. Um, I'd like to know more about your associates. associates. I haven't got much to say about them. Um... What do you mean? You must know something about of them. Of course I do. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. Okay. What about you? Tell me something about me. yourself. I'm a silver bird. Aha, okay. Maybe I'll ask later about all this. I don't this. know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but... What's that device this you have? It's a portable recording device. It's for field recording. No quality, but still. And the wires? Actually, just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. Okay. What's a contact microphone? Contact mic records sounds from inside things, like this ice. How does that thing work? The mic? I don't exactly know. Somehow it doesn't pick up vibrations from the air. The book said it only picks up structure-borne sound, if you like techno babble. Uh, she seems a bit more coherent than the others. Where did you get the mic from? Same place I got the recorder from. The Palisium. The Palisium? What's the Palisium? Oh, man. You haven't been to the Palisium? It's the coolest place in this whole drug-addled shithole. Oh. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop on Boogie Street in Jamrock. Musicians live there, like real musicians. I once saw Arno Van Eyck. Okay. Thinking about it really cheers her up. It's a long way from here. <laughs> Sounds like a place for congregating homosexuals. All right, Harry. Um, sounds interesting. Who is this Arno guy? Oh, yeah. Guess you wouldn't know Van Eyck. Or really be a Palisium going kind of person. <laughs> I get down, all right. I don't know what that means. I grind. I don't know what that means either. Uh, nor do I, but I have concrete evidence that I rock in the form of a wrecked tape player in a completely trashed hostel room. <laughs> <laughs> she breathes on her fingers. Looks like she doesn't know what to say. Never mind. Let's talk about the contact mic instead. That time has deserted me. Sucks, man. Oh, my morale! Is there something else? About the contact mic, perhaps? Actually, I have some non-mic okay. questions for you. What are you doing out here in the cold? Recording, I guess. I think I'm recording cracks in the ice. But there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps, too. Not sure how that will sound. She scratches her forehead. Um, uh, wait, what happened to the headphones? My boyfriend sold them. What for? I don't know, man. Things. Just stuff you need for life. Oh, okay. Everything checks out, sire. <laughs> and what are these... <laughs> All right, drama, thank you. Um, and what are these recordings for? The cracks, the footsteps? The musicians in the Palisium used them for making music. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. They looped the stuff, cutting the tapes together. They make music out of cracks in the ice and keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. That sounds great. I really like anyway, that idea. I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be, like, 
a music place anyway. She rubs her shoulders and looks around. I don't around. really know what I'm doing. They use synthesizers too. I don't have a synthesizer. Hmm. She looks at the recording device. The thing she thought would fill her hours with joy and escape. It's turning out to be an empty fantasy. She feels childish. Very useless all of a sudden. Oh, that's a shame. Take this, your code. Oh, Kim. No, man, fuck that, I'm cool. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. <laughs> it's okay. The lieutenant backs up, he throws you a glance. Now this is where a hat would come in handy. <laughs> Give me a here, you need this more than I do. Thanks. Uh uh she puts it on, it's a bit large for her. Uh you said it's supposed to be a music place. Did you mean the one Andre's got planned, the church? Yes. Yeah. The boys think it could be a place, like the Palisseum or something. Stupid. It's really not gonna be a Palisseum, that's for sure. Oh, okay. The boys? Yeah. Andre and the guys inside the tent. I had some other questions. Go ahead. Oh god. Um Oh we could that could work. Let's try it. The device is called oh, to the touch. Fuck. An angular Omicron logo adorns the yellow plastic cover. Underneath you see a reel of tape rolling. You put the device back on the ice. Maybe um tell me more about this music place you've got. It's supposed to become like a club for anodic dance music. Like that new style of synthesizer stuff they play at the Palisseum. Except that, yeah. Uh, she looks at the old wooden church up on the poles. As a mean wind comes bellowing in, the six-story structure lets out a doleful shriek. The floorboards are twisting, and the shooting beams are slowly cracking, like bones. Far east of the Golden Delta, beyond the industrial port, there is a black patch of unlit coast with the smallest creatures on the ice. I love you, Shivers, I really do. There will never be a club for anodic music here. I won't Not there. in a million years. What is an anodic music? Anodic dance music. You know, anodic, cathodic, music that's made with electronic instruments. Oh, okay. Uh, or computers too. Anything that uses electricity, but isn't guitars. Also found sounds, stuff like that. That sounds really cool to you me. You see clear, beautiful, violent flashes of light. Light cutting through a smoke-filled darkness. That is what the future will look like. If it ever comes. Okay, thanks Inland Empire. Enough about the church then. I had another question. Oh, that one's locked now, so I'll have to uh, put skill points into empathy to open this white check. Okay. okay. Bye. She turns her attention back to the recording device. Okay, so we've got a way into the church now, so that's cool. And it's auto-saving. That's peculiar. I wonder why. There's a bottle there. I'm going to pick that up. There's bottles everywhere. Oh, this is good. Take all, yeah. I can, I can trade these for money. Not that I need it at this point. Because I managed to con that guy in the crate. I've got plenty of money. But I'm going to take it anyway. I'm also going to put a little bit of something into my morale. Because it's not doing very well at the moment. My morale has taken a few hits of late. You know, ever since we found out that I drunkenly lost my car in the river... Okay. Anything else around here? God, we can actually see inside the building there. That's kind of cool. We can get in now. No, nope, Kim was right. Patience has paid off. Okay, let's go. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular no, 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 no. seal yep. the open lock the yeah. easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Feels like electricity and a very small piece of nothingness. You're very active today, Shivers. Let's go. Okay. As you do, you hear the echo of the Doom commercial area. It's black holes and dusty machines. Then the feeling passes. Ooh. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church. As though rushing to fill a great vacuum okay. in the heart of the city. 
This is quite ominous, isn't it? Is this going to be a... Whoa! Whoa! This is beautiful! Wow! A strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. Okay. More of the forked lightning pattern you saw outside. Okay. This grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. Feels like it's trying to become one with the church. Oh, this is ominous. The blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. Look at this, that massive hole. Cold wind blows in from the broken gallery. It makes your skin crawl. Two decks of reel-to-reel -reel tape spinning on empty. In white, silver, and apricot fields, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. Wow. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. <laughs> Leave me alone, you woman. Kneel. No. <laughs> Leave me alone, woman. All right. Your knees touch the floor. The floorboards are hard and cold. There, you kneel among the snowdrifts, diffuse light falling on your hands from beyond the glass. Close your eyes first. The world is silent, but for the creaks and cracks of the massive wooden structure behind you, it covers you from the wind outside. Okay. In the darkness, you sense her eyes on you, inspecting you with their multicolored glass, as if you're a bug under a microscope. Is Harry having one of his moments? The woman looks down at you, kneeling. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye of what? Compassion, remorse. It's morning. It's not possible to live. It's compassion. As that soft word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Do the same as you your get up. Your fingertips touch your chest four times. Then you rise from your knees into the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles her distant smile, sundered mm -hmm. by the crack in the glass. Encyclopedia. Mm, read, uh, we read The Greatest Innocence, so the mother of humanism. It's a mystery. Oh. A mystery sprinkled with self-pity and regret. For some reason, unknown to your mind looking at her delicate eyes makes you feel like you're ready for drowning oh. your heart knows but it does not want to say not yet let these things be unknown for now okay. all you know is Oof. this is the young mother of humanity and that you should go do something else escape her sad worry-worn look oh reconstruct the cracked glass hmm who is this it's kid? It's Dolores Day. The old woman was right. This is the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez, or the small Paimo church in some records. You knew of the it's place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. Ah. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. Okie dokie! There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Les Setsa, they call them. The seven, seven sisters. sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. Oh. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find anything connected to the lynching here. Something else, perhaps. He looks at the machinery lying around. There it is again. A small pang of guilt. It's time to ask him what happened here. Do you know why it was abandoned? I have a theory, yes. There was a police raid a while back. I heard the place was shot to pieces. Oh. The old woman in the village was being tactful with us when she didn't mention it. She has more respect for the RCM than many around here. Who conducted this well, raid? your station was involved, I hear. Although I can be sure. Mm. You're not sure? 
Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. I... I guess I could have been here. I'm sorry, I'm not saying you were. It was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything about it, why it was conducted, or who participated. I try not to pry into extra district matters. If I was here, I should find out what I was doing. Good luck. You will not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might be better to keep this one forgotten. Yeah. It happened a while ago. It's an important to our business in Martinez now. Oh, fuck. The yes! The falls into place in front of you. A ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one. Yes. And a text. A like motif below them both. What shattered this mosaic? Unknown. Who is this older woman? The scutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rights apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, thirty years, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. Wow. The motto, what does it say? Below both women, in luminous black letters. Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. And then, along the left side, après le monde, la gré. Après le gré, le monde de nouveau. Lieutenant, this used to say after life, death, after... Death. Life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. Yeah. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. Wow. No more, however. Why? It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. What is the RCM motto now? Justice, union, prudence, and force. Not very feminine. I like, uh, I like this. Puts the fear of God back in. Ooh, don't. Mm, no. I like the other one better. So do I. Um, what shattered this mosaic? Yeah. Step back. The mother of humanism towers above you. A wax painting on a cracked pane of glass. Nothing has changed in her expression. Beautiful stuff. Turn away. Well, my loves, I think we'll continue exploring this next time. Until then, bye-bye.